Fox News alert tonight. We finally got our hands on the mountains of evidence that the Pelosi's have spent months trying to cover up. The picture of Paul Pelosi's DUI is finally starting to come together. Every second of that night was documented in excruciating detail, and we have all of it. There was a witness that saw the whole thing, but I told him to stick around and he bailed. No idea where he went. Witnesses on the run? That's just the tip of the iceberg. There's a whole lot more. We have the dash cam footage, the dispatch tapes, photos, reports, everything. It paints a very dark picture. It's obvious to anyone with two eyes, this is not a misdemeanor. This is a felony. The cops admitted how serious it was on the tape they've been hiding. They told Paulie he was lucky to be alive. You guys are both actually really lucky that the crash wasn't a lot uh, more serious than it was in terms of injuries. Because there's crashes that I've been to a lot less damage than this where people have turned out a lot more seriously injured. The cops knew this was serious, felony level serious. Yet today, Papa Pauly cut a plea deal anyway and only got a slap on the wrist. Three years probation, a DUI course, some court fees and five days in jail, but he doesn't have to spend any time in jail. He only has to do one day of community service. And he has to install a little ignition device, so he has to blow into a little tube every time he starts the Porsche. The rest, knocked out. DUI attorneys in Napa are telling primetime this is the bare minimum of what somebody could have gotten in this case. And if this tape had come out, there would have been no way the DA would have let Paul off with such an easy plea. This definitely would have been charged as a felony, and he definitely would have been given prison. That's why they hid the tape until after the plea deal and waited until this morning to release the footage. The second Paul E.P. was in the clear. They clicked send. But let's take a closer look at what happened that night and walk through it step by step so you can decide if the punishment fits the crime. From the second cops heard about it on their radio, they knew this was major. Two vehicles involved, moderate to major damage. And they knew exactly who they were dealing with. Listen carefully. I ran the sports plate. Uh -huh. Everybody knows Papa Pauly in Napa, but what was he doing there? This is late at night. Where's Nancy? Those questions would have to wait while the officers first tended to the victim. What happened? I saw the car coming. He was coming toward the intersection? From the stop to here, he kept coming. Very fast? Fast. From the left side, right? From the left side. And what happened after the accident? Well, nothing. I'm going to tell you what you told me, and tell me if this is correct. You were coming in this direction, north, approximately between 45 and 50 miles per hour. You were approaching the intersection. You saw the other car on the other side. He came in this direction at high speed. You didn't have time to do anything. Brake. Yes, brake. And then you felt the impact. The car went out of control. After the accident, people started to arrive. Anything else? That's everything. Okay, wait here for one second. So the victim doesn't speak any English, and we'll get into that later. So while this is all happening, Paulie was on the other side of the street. He'd somehow crawled out of his totaled Porsche and was busy fumbling through his wallet looking for his right ID, which... Must have been easier said than done because the police report said that Papa Paul handed them his police donor card instead of his driver's license. Now, Primetime did get one thing wrong about this story, and we need to issue a correction because facts are important. Originally, we told you Paulie P. flashed a gold donor card, but we were wrong and we're sorry for that. Turns out it was actually a platinum card, which you get for a minimum donation of $100,000. It's only for you know, real big investment gurus like Papa Paul. But the cops weren't buying it. Watch this. You were obviously the one driving the vehicle, right? Nobody else was controlling it somehow. Uh, and have you consumed any medicine or any drugs as of today? How many medications do you generally take on every day? Any of those medications uh, impair your ability to drive or anything like that? Do you happen to know that the names of the medications off the top of your head? I have on my phone. Do you know uh, what you're taking for? As far as the medications, um, all the ones that you've consumed today, were, uh, when was the last time that you've consumed them? 
Do you feel any effects right now from any of those medications? If you feel like you're not impaired, we could just skip to doing a breath, a breath test. Yeah, you can grab onto my shoulder. Yeah. So feet together, arms on your sides. You're going to look up at the sky, and then you're going to close your eyes, and then I'm going to say it again. And then I don't want you to injure yourself. Would you be willing to do the breathalyzer test? And I, I wouldn't want it, you to fall over and hurt yourself. Are you sure you could complete the test? Because I really don't want you to fall over and hurt yourself. That's the last thing I'm... Right, but, but that, that defeats the, the whole purpose of the test, grabbing onto a patrol car. So I'm requesting that you take a, uh, a breathalyzer test. Um, it's not a, it's, it's a voluntary test, but... So, so none of the tests are pass or fail. Are you willing to do the breathalyzer test? Right, no, I, I understand you want to go home. You were involved in a crash. Right. I smell alcohol coming from your breath. I can see you're very unsteady on your feet. And when Paulie realized things weren't really going his way, he pulled a, do you know who I am? Wait, wait, wait. Can we hear that one more time? And then this time keep it rolling? Right, no, I, I understand who you are. And I'm not, I'm not here to try to, to do anything uh, to... Okay, we'll do draw any negative attention to you. Um, if you've been honest with me, there's really nothing that you should be worried about in terms of the alcohol you consume. If you've been honest with me about your consumption being only two, two glasses of, of, of alcohol. Yeah, but the police, to their credit, didn't really buy his excuses that, and he had had a couple. So Paul knew that he was too drunk to drive, but he wasn't being honest with the officers, and he knows that if he's going to take the test, he's going to get popped. I mean, look at the scene. This was a totally chaotic scene. Two wrecked cars, busted airbags, broken fences. I mean, if you see some of these things, first of all, why was the other airbag deployed in the passenger seat if no one was there? But that's besides the point. This could have been vehicular manslaughter. This could have been vehicular homicide. I mean, these two guys could have died. I don't know. Remember, when they told us that no one got hurt, well, they had these pictures, then they were hiding them. Pictures of Paul's bruised and bloody hands. Look at that. And if you look closely, he doesn't have his wedding ring on. Well, I don't know if he's just one of those guys that doesn't wear his ring. I don't know. So what now? Will there be any consequences for the people who covered this up? Like Napa County DA Allison Haley. Hey, Allie. I mean, she didn't do anything by the book. Allie thinks this case is her golden ticket to higher office in California. After brokering a plea deal for Paul Pelosi, she never has to worry about fundraising for the rest of her life. This thing was big, and she swept it under the rug. But she says today she handled the case like any other case. This is just sort of a case of he's getting special treatment just because of who he is, who he's married to. So we evaluated this case based on the facts uh, as they came forward and made our charging decision like we do in any other case. Yeah, okay. And then she took a shot at primetime. This case has been unusual in... Sometimes I watch news coverage and it's like they're talking about a completely different case. Um, and it started way back when I had representatives saying that I had dropped charges. Uh, I hadn't even pressed charges yet. And it sort of has gone through this cycle of these bizarre facts, none of which are true. I can just assure you that my attention, my focus has been on what the evidence has been as it's come into the office. 
Well, he must be watching another case coverage because, you know, we never said that she dropped charges. We just got a lot of info three hours ago. And I just want to give a hand to the primetime team who did an excellent job gathering up all these materials and putting it together tonight. But we're not done. This is just a little taste. We have a lot of material to go through, and we're going to have more for you guys tomorrow. Brian Claypool is a DUI attorney, and he's been following the case with us and joins me now. All right, so, Brian, your reaction to what we saw tonight? Yeah. Hey, Jesse, great to be back with you. This is a scripted injustice. What do I mean by that? The DA, defense lawyer, and this judge, they met yesterday. I don't know if you mentioned that. They, they, they all met yesterday. They that did? never happens. They, they, yes, they met. The judge said, I met the lawyers yesterday. They scripted and choreographed this entire charade today. And they should, they should be awarded, they should be given the Razzie Award. You know what those are? Yeah. The awards for the worst. Yeah. Perf yeah. They, they all get a Razzie Award, dude. Why? Because that, because the, Bivens gets up, the lawyer for Pelosi gets up, and she says to the court, Jesse, I'm doing an open plea. What does that mean? That means technically she hasn't struck a plea bargain with the DA. This was an, an entire pretext and a ruse to show the public that they were not in cahoots. But this wasn't an open plea. They all met the day before, and they scripted exactly went down. It's a travesty of justice. Now, if you go back and watch the, the tape from this morning, it is, it is comical. I mean, the, the, Bivens gets up, oh, I'm doing an open plea. And then the judge is like, okay, really? And then, the, and then the prosecutor's like, okay, what is it? And then the judge, hmm, let me think about that. Okay, hey, what do you think, Ms. DA? Hmm, okay, we'll agree to that. I mean, it was just a total charade, and there should be an investigation done on this. Let me tell you the worst part of this, Jesse, and then I'll let you go. I'll let you talk. The worst part of this is exactly what you were talking about. There is serious physical injury. There were medical records. The DA said today, I talked to the victim yesterday, and he gave me more medical records. A responsible judge and a responsible, unbiased DA would have said, let's put this case over. Let's look at these medical records. Let's see if there is serious injury. Why? Because of what you said. If there was serious injury, which there is, we know, this rises to a felony. You don't close a case if you don't know yet whether it's a serious injury. And if it is a serious injury, this should have been a felony. And we're looking at these reports about this hearing they had today. He's not even on real probation. He doesn't have to pee in a cup every six months. He doesn't have to meet with a probation officer. It's not even real probation, is it? It's total garbage. It, it's called, it's out here, it's called summary probation. What's that called? What's that? What's that really mean? Oh, go go sit on your boat and smoke a cigar because you don't have a form. You don't have a formal probation officer. Did you know that? No. So you're saying so you're saying probation. yesterday the Holy. D.A. met with the judge who met yes. with the defense attorney and they choreographed this hearing today because we watched the hearing at the office and yes. the prosecutor. It's almost like she was a zombie. She didn't object to anything. Pelosi's defense attorney ran the whole show. And then they get a slap on the wrist, and all of a sudden the tape comes out, and you're like, oh, my God, these cars are wrecked. There's bruises everywhere. We're finding out this guy doesn't even speak English. He's like 50 years old. I'm not even sure he's from this country legally. And, and he's still receiving medical care, still receiving medical care. And, and this guy gets a slap on the wrist. It's a joke. I'll give you the last word. No. Yeah, exactly. This, 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 is, is, this is an injustice. There, there needs to be an investigation. This is what happens in our, 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 our legal pipelines are clogged with democratic sewer. And that's exactly what happened here. The only way we're going to we're going to clear that pump out is through shows like yours, creating transparency, seeking accountability and having people vote, vote in the next election and make sure we vote for a, public officials and, and prosecutors who are going to abide by the law and apply the law equally to everybody in the country. Well said, Brian. Thank you so much and for all of your help on this you case bet. with us. And this is, yeah. you know, when we launched yeah, the show, just we wanted to do this show because corruption was important to us. And we don't take no for an answer here at prime time. We got to put a spotlight on this and there can't be two different levers of justice. Unacceptable. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.